This video takes a look at two key search algorithms, the linear search and the binary search. So searching algorithms are used to find items of data within um, data structures. And there are some standard algorithms that um, each have their own merits that we will take a look at. And they are the linear search algorithm and the binary search algorithm. So with a linear search, basically this just involves stepping through each item of data in a set of data, one after the other, until the item that we're looking for is located. So if we had the following um, data structure, uh, the following array, where we've got items A, F, B, E, D, G, and C, each having their own location within the array, if we were looking for the letter D, a linear search would simply look in index zero first of all and compare a D with the contents of that um, location and find an A. Clearly they don't match, so we will increment the index by one and look in index one. We'll compare the D with the item in that index, which is an F, they don't match, so we move on. We look at the next, D isn't the same as B, so we move on. D and E are compared, they're not the same, so we move on to index 4. D is compared with that contents. It is a D there, so because those two match, we know that we found the item that we're looking for, and the search stops. And here's a simple algorithm for a linear search, which is represented as a flowchart. We get the length of the array. We check to see if the pointer is at the end of the array. If it's not, we do a check to see whether we find whether we, the searched for item is found at that location. If not, we move the pointer onto the next um, index of the array. If the pointer is at the end, then we stop. Otherwise, we do a check to see if the item that we're looking for is there. If not, we move the pointer on, and that continues. Um, until either we get to the end where we say that we haven't found the item or if we have found the item then we display the location of the item. And here it is in pseudocode. We start off with um, having a variable called position, well it could be called position, it could be called index, but we set it at zero. In other words we want to make sure that we're starting at the start of the array. And we have a little flag variable called found that we'll set to false and whilst the position that we're looking at is less than the length of the array, so basically whilst we're not at the end of the array, and whilst found is equal to false, so whilst that flag variable continues to be false, we do a check to see whether the search for item that we're looking for is in that location of the array. If it is, then we say where th that we found the item and it's at that particular position, and then we change the found flag to true so that it breaks the while loop. Otherwise, we just increment the position on by one again and do the check again in the next index. Now, the binary search is another search algorithm, and this uses the principles of divide and conquer. Now, what's really, really important to recognize is that when we do a binary search, we have to make sure that the data set is first in order. They have to be ordered. If we are ever given an exam question in a GCSE where uh, you're asked whether you should do a linear search or a binary search on a set of data that's not in order, then obviously you would say, well, in the current form, a linear search would be the, uh, the only method because a binary search has to have ordered data. So it has to have ordered data. Um, and it involves starting the search at the middle, strangely enough, of the array, and to work out if the search item is positioned lower than the middle or higher than the middle. If it's positioned lower than the middle, the search is narrowed to the first half of the data. So in other words, by, you, by doing a binary search where the data is first ordered, we're very quickly removing half of the data to search in. And therefore, we are using the principles of divide and conquer, which, when scaled up, is a very, very efficient algorithm. So for large data sets, this is a very efficient way of searching for data. So if it's positioned higher than the middle, the search is narrowed to the second half of the data. And once the data set is halved, the search then continues as it did before in the middle. We're continually dividing the data set until the item is found. And by doing that, the time taken to search for an item can be much faster than using a linear search, certainly for larger data sets. So here's an example of 
carrying out the binary search algorithm on a set of data. So let's say that we're looking for the letter G. We first of all look at the middle item and we do that by identifying the lower bound and the upper bound of the data. So we would add the lower bound to the upper bound and divide by two to find out where the midpoint is. Now here's an example. If the lower bound is at zero and the upper bound is at 10, we do 10 minus zero, it should be plus zero, uh, 10 plus zero and then divide by two, giving us the midpoint of five. So the middle value that we're looking at first of all is going to be at the center. So it's gonna be F. Now, because we're looking for a G, and because F is lower than the G, what we can do is we can start narrowing our search to the top half of that array. So we've just got rid of all the data from index 0 to 5. We know it's not there. Because the data's in order, we know that G is higher than F, or after F in the alphabet, so we can remove the lower half of the um, array. And then we continue. So the lower bound now moves up to the position one up from the midpoint. So that's now the, the new lower bound at position 6. The upper bound's at 10, and we repeat the same process. So we do 10 plus 6, which is um, 16, and we divide by 2, giving us the midpoint of 8. So now the second comparison is that we compare our search for item, which is a G, with the letter that is in position H, at 8, which is I. Because I is higher than the letter G in the alphabet, we can remove all um, items that are in index eight or higher, and so reduce the data set that we're searching for once again. So now on the third um, iteration of the binary search, the lower bound is at six, the upper bound is at seven. We do six and seven, we add them together and we divide by two and we get the midpoint of 6.5. Now at this point, there isn't a midpoint of 6.5. The only um, values that we can really check in, the indexes that we can check in, are the integers six and seven. So whenever we have a decimal for a midpoint, what we do is we round up. Okay, so we round up to seven and we use that as our midpoint. Now we're looking for a G at index 7 it's an H so we haven't found it yet and we know that H is higher or after G in the alphabet so we can remove that top half of the array in other words just at index 7 and now we're looking once again another iteration of this binary search but we're now looking at a very very small data set which consists of just one item which is effectively in index 6 of our array we now repeat the same process. The lower bound and the upper bound are both at six. We add them together. We divide by two to get the midpoint of six. And we see whether the letter G is there. It is. So we have now found the item that we're looking for. And that there is the binary search algorithm. That's how it works. So here's a flowchart to represent the binary search algorithm. We start off with a flag variable set to false. So our found variable is set to false. We um, have our um, first, our lower bound set to zero and the upper bound, which here is called last, which is the length of the list minus one. And we check to see first of all, whether we have found the item, we'll check the flag variable. If it is um, not false, then what we do is we do the first, so the lower bound and the upper bound, we add them together and we divide by two to get the midpoint. We then check to see whether the item that we're looking for is at the midpoint. If it is, then we say that we found it. We change our found flag to true and then we effectively end the algorithm. But if it's not, then what we do is we check to see whether we have got to the end of the algorithm. If we have, then we print that we failed the search Otherwise, what we do is we start to work out which part of the data set we can remove. So we say, is the midpoint, the item at the midpoint, greater than the item that we're looking for? Um, and if it is greater than the item that we're looking for, then what we're going to do is we're going to change the, um, the upper bound to one after the midpoint, uh, one before the midpoint. And if it is lower than the one that we're looking for, 
then what we will do is um, effectively the opposite with the midpoint and then that will continue around and here's an example for you to have a look, little look at um, in your own time um, of the binary search algorithm written in pseudocode so just trace that um, or work your way through that algorithm and see if you can um, match the um, the algorithm that I've just shown you in terms of the workings of working through an array see if you can match those steps to the steps that you can see in this algorithm.